Firemen from Lafayette, Scott, and Broussard rushed to the scene and were able to get the blaze under control in about an hour. When the chief was on duty, left the station, he said that he could smell the smoke at Station 1, right down the street. And uh, as soon as he got here, he turned in the second alarm. As soon as the second alarm went in, he called the third alarm. Officials with the Lafayette Fire Department say the fire apparently started in this back lot here behind the thrift store. The lot is filled with old boxes and clothing. The fire apparently started here, spread up into the walls, and then engulfed the ceiling. We have most of second-hand clothing. Salvation Army officials say they don't know how much they've lost to this fire, but they don't appear too hopeful right now. I don't think it'd be restored, though. It's too far gone. Fire officials say they still haven't officially confirmed the cause of the fire. They are, however, questioning two juveniles who were apparently on the scene when the fire broke out. Governor Buddy Romer is scheduled to address state lawmakers tomorrow in Baton Rouge. Romer is expected to give additional details regarding proposed budget cuts. The governor has already announced plans to lay off more than 2,000 state employees. And for the thousands of others who survived the house cleaning, their work week will be cut from 40 down to 36 hours. Well, budget problems elsewhere in the state are prompting teachers in some areas to take the day off from school tomorrow. Instructors at a number of schools in both Tangipahoa parishes and other areas say they'll boycott classes Monday to protest salary cuts in that parish. Teachers in parts of neighboring Terrebonne Parish may vote to do likewise tomorrow. In Bogalusa, teachers will be returning to public schools. Earlier, they went on a three-day walkout protesting the recent failure of tax proposition that would have gone to supplement teacher salaries. Iberia Parish attracted the attention yesterday of two of the state's highest-ranking politicians. U.S. Senator Jay Bennett Johnston and Congressman Billy Toza were at Weeks Island yesterday to celebrate the arrival of a new high-tech industry called CVD. Once in operation, CVD will provide some 200 area jobs while producing special optics and computer components. Both lawmakers say the new business is just what the doctor ordered. Uh, I think it's uh, the new field for Louisiana, which is uh, manufacturing. We've just started to try to uh, pull together as a state to attract manufacturing here, and we're having real success at that. You can bet you the word will go out. This is a good place to come and do business, good labor. A good, strong uh, business support in this community and a good place to come and, and make some products. In addition to providing some 200 jobs, officials with CVD say the surrounding community will also benefit from their company's purchase of raw materials and contractual labor. Officials with CVD say they hope to have their $15 million facility online by mid-1989. The scandal that forced Reverend Jimmy Swaggart out of the pulpit may lead to some big changes in the Assemblies of God Church here in Louisiana. Church leaders will next month meet in Shreveport to discuss proposals that would alter the way future leaders are chosen and also the way in which errant ministers are punished. One district official predicts the meeting will be a controversial one, but in the end he says it will benefit the Assemblies of God Church. Well, stay with us when we come back a look at the latest in world news. Including an update on the American position in the Persian Gulf. A lot of people have been coming over to their Lincoln Mercury dealer. One reason might be Mercury Tracer, the small car with a big list of standard features. 68 in all. That's more than Toyota Corolla and Nissan Sentra offer, and Tracer is priced less than either one. Add a customer cash savings of $500, and this little guy becomes an even bigger value. But customer cash is a limited time offer, so come on over. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer today. Win Dixie's Early Week Sizzlers. Get a hot price on Coke and Sprite. Sunday through Wednesday, two liter Coke and Sprite are just $1.09 each. Domino Sugar is a super low $1.19 at Winn-Dixie. And WD brand U.S. Choice Boneless Shoulder Roast is just $1.49 a pound. Plus, get double value on manufacturer's coupons at Winn-Dixie. Early Week Sizzlers. Get them while they're hot at Winn-Dixie, America's supermarket. 
Today, a lot of soybean herbicides talk tough. But only one holds the line against broadleaf weeds and high prices. Tackle Soybean Herbicide. With its new low price, Tackle puts the crunch on cockleburr, velvet leaf, morning glory, and other tough broadleaf weeds. Don't let broadleaves or high prices ruin your season. Hit them hard with Tackle. And be sure to ask about the new low price plus the $4 a gallon rebate. Say yes! Your USL Raging Cajun football season tickets are on their way to you. Say yes! Five great home games, Division I football, run and shoot football, Nelson Stokely style. Say yes! Renew your USL season tickets right away! The United States today downplayed the possibility of any immediate retaliation for an Iranian attack earlier today on a Saudi-owned tanker. There were no casualties and only minor damage reported to the vessel. Meanwhile, back in this country, American sailors left for the Gulf today from their home port in Jacksonville, Florida. Their departure is said to be part of a routine rotation of personnel and equipment. But it comes as Iran's foreign minister issued a warning that his country would respond in a, quote, decisive way, end quote, to any U.S. intervention against Iranian military forces in that region. Well, back in this country, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff appeared on Face the Nation today to talk about the current situation in the Gulf and possible future action. I should say in regard to rules of engagement, however, so that there's no mistaking in anybody's mind that the guidelines that we give our commanding officers, no matter what the circumstances, allow them the latitude to protect themselves and to do it effectively and adequately. We're, what we're doing is using military force to support our foreign policy, and that is to increase our influence with those nations in the Gulf that are Western-oriented, oil-bearing countries. You know, 60% of the world's oil reserves are in that area, and uh, the future of the free world depends in large part, not only in the access to those, preserve, those reserves, but also our influence in that part of the world. Admiral Crow says the Navy is looking into the possibility of using smaller patrol-type vessels for future duty in the Gulf. But at the present time, he says no final decisions have been made. Secretary of State George Shultz continued his visit of the Soviet Union today by attending services at a Greek Orthodox church in the provincial capital of Georgia. The Secretary's appearance today comes as part of a recess between himself and Soviet leaders who are working towards completion of an arms control agreement prior to the planned summit. Today, the normally somber Schultz took time out to go into the crowds and do some sightseeing. With just two days remaining before the Pennsylvania primaries, Jesse Jackson is letting frontrunner Michael Dukakis have it with both barrels. While campaigning today, Jackson called Dukakis' support and commitment very shallow. The comment comes as a sharp contrast to the best friend's campaign style Jackson and Dukakis have been boasting of these past few days. An attack jet crashed today at an air show in California. It happened at the Marine Corps Air Station at El Toro when an F-18 piloted by Colonel Jerry Caddick failed to complete a loop maneuver. As we'll see in a moment, the Colonel's attack plane crashed right in front of a large crowd of spectators who were on hand for the performance. Caddick was himself critically injured and was taken to a nearby hospital at Mission Viejo. When we come back, we'll take you to a luncheon honoring subway gunman Bernhard Getz. And we'll also take you to a big outdoor music celebration in New Orleans. For about $4 a day, you could drink 10 cups of coffee, eat 10 candy bars, go to one movie by yourself, or drive the number one selling car in the world, Ford Escort. During dollar days at your Southern City Ford dealer, you can drive the best cars and trucks in the world for only dollars a day. For example, right now, Escort is only $129 a month. That's about $4 a day. Buy one loaded with all this and you'll save $12.07. $4 a day for an Escort and $12.07 in savings. See Hub City Ford in Lafayette now. Only one psychiatric and chemical dependency facility in Acadiana meets Medicare standards. It's a hospital whose psychiatric treatment programs are accredited. The one treatment center in Lafayette that offers you this high level of quality? Cypress Hospital, with more individual attention and more qualified professionals. Because our standards are simply higher. Cypress Hospital. No wonder Cypress is the doctor's choice. 
If you have furniture in your future home, furniture is going to save you money. And this Monday and Tuesday, home's doors remain open till 8 p.m. to bring you some of the most fantastic clearance sale savings on thousands of discontinued, one-of-a-kind, and factory closeout items. Savings like Sealy $300 mattress sets, $95. $600 Bassett king-size bedrooms, $195. $400 laser board recliners, just $149. Plus more, it's free financing, no interest for 12 long months, no money down, no payments till July. It's Monday and Tuesday, clearance sale savings on thousands of items and free one-year financing, all locations of home furniture. If you've programmed her into your future, yes. an engagement ring from Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry will do the rest. Back in 1984, Bernhard Getz was arrested for shooting four black youths in a New York subway. Getz claimed the four were about to mug him and that he acted in self-defense. After a protracted legal battle, the courts agreed and Getz was found guilty on a lesser charge of carrying an unlicensed pistol. Today, Getz was honored as a hero at a luncheon held by members of the New York State Rifle and Pistol Club. Randall Pinkston was there and has this story. It was a rare public appearance for Bernhard Getz, today hailed as a hero by the Federation of New York State Rifle and Pistol Clubs. In recognition of your courage, the right of self-defense, and the principles of the Constitution of the United States. The fact that I was being mugged in plain view of at least 10 other healthy adult males, I think tells something about New York and where New York is. And uh, the society does need some change. The so-called subway gunman shot four youths on a crowded train in December 1984. One of them was paralyzed. Getz said he pulled his unlicensed revolver because he feared he would be mugged after one of the four asked him for $5. The case triggered demonstrations for and against Getz. Last June, he was cleared of the shootings but convicted of gun possession. Today, about 200 gun enthusiasts paid $35 each to honor Getz. I came because I'm very curious as to, to see the uh, person who stu stood up for himself on the subways of New York. Unfortunately, in this city, only the rich and the famous a license for a pistol. Just last Friday, in a major victory for Getz, the New York State Crime Victims Compensation Board exempted him from a law which requires that any money made by convicts be held in escrow for their crime victims. The board, in effect, ruled the four youths get shot are not victims. The decision isn't particularly important to me. I have no immediate plans to do anything commercial right now anyway. The Federation of New York State Rifle and Pistol Clubs not only honored Getz today, they also launched a fundraiser to help him with his legal expenses. With his criminal problems nearly over, Getz wants to change the focus, calling on the district attorney to indict Ramsur and Canty on perjury charges. Randall Pinkston for CBS News, New York. Well, for those of us who could get away this weekend, New Orleans was definitely the place to be for some of the greatest jazz music around. The occasion, of course, the annual Jazz and Heritage Festival that takes place on the infield of the fairgrounds horse race track. Now at its 19th year, the event typically draws crowds of anywhere from 300 to 500,000 people. For those of you who didn't get a chance to get out this weekend to take part, don't worry about it. The festival will continue next weekend. Half a million people all right there. <laughs> Man, if you're not claustrophobic, it'll make you that way. That's right. Yeah. That's for sure. Beautiful day for it, though. Could not have been better. If we could just keep this kind of day going all through the rest of the week, it'd be terrific, but tomorrow won't be quite so nice. Big word is but there. Okay. Details on the weather coming up next. The Auto Show was a huge success. Moss Honda's savings celebration continues through April 30th with the Auto Show special. The Honda CRX HF for only $149 per month. See all three Hondas. Import Car of the Year winners at Moss Honda. Shop us first, shop us last. It makes no difference. Your best buy is at Moss Honda. 1401 Surrey Lafayette. We have a chance to make April a record-breaking month at Brown's. And I'm determined we'll make it. If there's some new furniture you want, we won't give you any reason to go home without it. Need six months to pay with no interest? You got it. Need to buy with no money down? You got it. The price more you want to pay? I'll make you a deal you can't refuse. Like these beautiful $1,500 three-piece bedrooms for only $6.99. We will set an all-time sales record, and you will get the deal of a lifetime today and tomorrow at Brown's Lot. Yeah. 
Available exclusively from Brothers. River Stage is at Butte the Rose today, 12.5. Tomorrow, 12.3. Sunrise tomorrow is at 6.31, and it sets at 7.41. In the background is a lake at the Academy of Sacred Heart in Grand Coteau. This was uh, shot at about 1.30 this afternoon by photographer Mike Gervais, and it was a gorgeous day to be outside. We had blue skies, gorgeous weather, temperatures above normal today. It was perfectly beautiful. But we do have another storm system taking shape out to our west, and it will be bringing us pretty good chances of some scattered thunderstorms across the area tomorrow. Let's take a look at the temperatures over the afternoon hours. We had a few 70s, upper 70s, across the northern sections of Louisiana. Most of us were in the mid-80s, but New Orleans hit 91 degrees. That was a new record high for them this afternoon. And the top temperature in the nation was Laredo. They were also sizzling, 102 degrees. Temperatures out to the west were generally in the 30s and 40s and in the 50s with the warm weather across the southeastern United States. And this evening we have 73 degrees and our dew point is 63. The humidity is at 71 percent. Winds are out of the southeast now ushering in moisture once again across the area at 7 miles per hour and the barometer is falling, a sign that the next storm is on the way. And for today, our normal high should be 81 degrees. We were 6 degrees warmer than usual, up to 87 degrees. It was very nice out, and our morning low was 64, also a little bit above normal. This evening, we do have clear skies across the southeastern United States, but there are a few clouds now across particularly the southern sections of Louisiana. Some low clouds have been over parts of New England throughout the day, but we're watching is what is going on right here across the central plains. You'll see a lot of clouds with some uh, the clouds now extending down in through parts of Texas. That's the next storm system that we will watch the, for tomorrow. And then we also have some clouds across parts of the Pacific Northwest. Now, the National Radar Summary will show you that beneath these clouds, we do have a line of thunderstorms, which is developing now across much of the central sections of Texas. And there is now a tornado watch in effect for that area until 2 o'clock this morning. Otherwise, scattered showers from Minnesota southward in through parts of Oklahoma. And we do have scattered showers across parts of Montana and across California, but there are snow advisories where the mountainous areas out across western Montana will receive between 3 and 8 inches of snow, a couple isolated showers in the southeast. Now here's what's going on. We did have a cold front slip through here early this morning. That's what dried us out, got rid of that humidity, really allowed for a gorgeous day. But it is going to be lifting back to the north as a warm front for tomorrow, and then we do have a double barrel low out to our west. This is going to begin to slide to the east, and as it moves into the very moist, unstable air, which is now across the area, pretty good chance of some scattered showers and thunderstorms. It already has caused quite a few problems across the western sections of Texas. They have had visibilities reduced due to the strong winds and the blowing of the dust. Visibilities there reduced to about uh, only two miles with the 35 to 50 mile per hour winds. Another front dropping down from the plains, dropping temperatures into the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And for tomorrow, that system is going to continue to track to the east, and it will run into rather unstable air. So we will have about a 40% chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms across the area. Some of these could be of the rough and tumble nature, so we'll keep an eye on that. And the next system will continue moving through the Central Plains. Here's the way things look for the next five days. We'll have a 40% chance of thunderstorms on Monday, but as this is a very fast-moving system, we look for sunshine to return on Tuesday. The rest of the week is looking great with temperatures close to 80 degrees. The coastal forecast tomorrow calls for choppy conditions with scattered thunderstorms. Southerly winds at 15 knots and the seas 3 to 5 feet. Tonight, increasing cloudiness and patchy fog possibly forming a 30% chance of scattered thunderstorms down to 63 degrees. And for tomorrow, a 40% chance of thunderstorms. A high of 82 winds will switch to the northwest with the passage of the front. And tomorrow night then, it'll be decreasing cloudiness, becoming fair after midnight, a low of about 60 degrees. So rather stormy conditions, a definite possibility all the way from eastern Texas on in through Mississippi tomorrow, including us, and then oh, beautiful by Tuesday. All right, Gail, thanks a lot. Rex Moore is up next with sports, and oh, they've been busy today. Oh, he's been telling us they've been running all over the state. The golf tournament, the draft, he'll be up next with the stories. Harvey Toy 
Toyota of Arvo of Lafayette will close its doors 3 to 4 p.m. Monday to slash prices for the largest sale in our history. Monday, Midnight Madness. Harvey Toyota of Arvo must insist. No dealers, please. Certified appraisers will be on hand to give you the highest price for your trade. Harvey will pay off any balance owed on the spot financing. Monday, Midnight Madness will end at the stroke of midnight. 25 used Toyotas must be sold. Every new car and truck too low to advertise. Monday, Midnight Madness, Harvey Toyota of Arvo, Lafayette. The Roland Babies, one year and growing, each with their own individual style. Jacob likes Buster Brown, Laura wants health techs, Macon prefers Baby Crest, Ariel insists upon laces and bows. Find your baby's favorites at the Maison Blanche Baby Sale. You'll find savings of 20 to 30% on famous maker items for the most discriminating infant or toddler. Oh baby, what a sale! Like nobody else! Now at Maison Blanche. The Acadiana RV Sport and Travel Show is coming to Lafayette Saturday and Sunday. Packing the Cajun Dome with motorhomes, travel trailers, fifth-wheelers, pop-ups, towing rigs, bayliner boats, and much more. Register to win a trip to anywhere in the continental United States. And fishermen, you can watch as live bass strike lures in the 5,000-gallon hog trough. Clinics to be given daily by a fishing expert. See the $400,000 Bluebird Motor Coach. Enjoy the Wild Animal Petting Zoo and Newsom's Incredible Snake Show. It's the RV Show with much more. Saturday from 10 to 9 and Sunday from noon to 6. As we just told you, TV 10 sports crew all over the state today. You guys are busy. John Moran, another seven-day week. We don't like to give him days off. It keeps him on his toes. There he was go. at the golf and the draft. We'll start first of all with the draft. Now, the Atlanta Falcons had the first pick, and to no one's surprise, they chose linebacker Andre Bruce of Auburn. Now, they better have taken him because he was already signed with the Falcons. Kansas City picked next, and they took Neil Smith of Nebraska, a defensive end. Next, the Detroit Lions went for a defensive back, that being Benny Blades of the Miami Hurricanes. Now, what about the Saints? Well, picking lower than they ever have, 25th in the first round, they got a good one. He is called Craig Ironhead Hayward, and he played a running back at the University of Pittsburgh. He's big at well over 250 pounds, and he's fast. He ran a 4.842 two weeks ago. Ironhead rushed for over 1,700 yards last year at Pitt, second best in school history. He will fill a big need for the Saints at fullback, and Jim Moore is ecstatic to have him. You know, he's, there's not a whole lot of guys can do it. He's he's got he's he's got size. He can for a guy that big. He's got he's got he can run. I mean, he's got you know adequate speed. He's got uh, excellent uh, change of direction. He's got uh, outstanding hands to catch the ball. He can be a, he can be a power runner. He can run over people. He also has the ability to to juke people. Um, he can run wide. He can hit it up inside. He's got abilities that, that not a lot of people have. They're rare abilities. And for their second round pick, the Saints went for a speedy wide receiver. Brett Perryman was the third player chosen from Miami in the first two rounds, and he can fly, running the 40 in 4.43. In the third round, they took nose tackle Tony Stevens of Clemson, who is 6'3 and 200, 306 pounds. Excuse me. The Saints' fourth round pick is another fullback, Oklahoma Sooner Lydell Carr. Two others that we didn't get on the board for you, Greg Scales, a tight end out of Wake Forest, and Keith Taylor, defensive back from Illinois, rounds out the first six rounds for him today. And all in all, it looks like a good draft for New Orleans, especially considering they drafted 26th overall. Well, another person in New Orleans who had a good day was Chip Beck at the USF&G Golf Classic. He had a three-shot lead to start the day and then birdied four of the first six holes. That led to a final round of 64, giving him a 262 total, which is 26 under par. That's just one shot off the all-time record set by Ben Hogan in 1945. He did set a couple of records, however, in beating Lanny Watkins by seven strokes. The course and tournament marks of 267 fell by a whopping five shots. Our John Moran was also at the Lakewood Country Club today and asked him about the records. Chip back at the 17th. 25 feet. For Were you aware of the record, 27 under par, when you're trying for that? I really was. Uh, the tour record is 27. Uh, I knew that, and I, I was trying for that. What I finished, I was... <laughs> yeah, I knew that. I knew if I birdied the last three, I'd get it by one, right? Yeah, almost. I think I tied it, though, right? Tied the record, maybe? Or whatever. John had no idea. Time for your daily double results now from Evangeline Downs. The first race winner was number seven, Hey Guilty. He paid $18.90. Second race was a dandy, and here is Herb Holiday with the stretch call. As they swing to the head of the stretch, it's Cherry's Boy in complete command. Restless Monarch racing second in the middle of the racetrack. Stony Great Art still third at the rail. That's Fresco M fourth. 
They've got less than a sixteenth of a mile to go. That's Cherry's Boy in front. All right, Cherry's Boy in doing that. He set a four and a, well, he tied a four and a half furlong record out at Evangeline Downs, 51 seconds, four and one fifth. Now, also today, the high school state swim meet in UNO campus. Lafayette I had a great time over there. The boys and the girls both finished eighth in the state. Bobby Eastback, Marco Rivera, and Maria Gatch all having good swims today. NBA scoreboard Chicago in the final day of the regular season. They beat the Celtics 115-108. It was the Lakers stomping Golden State. Dallas gets past San Antonio. 76ers lose again, this time to Detroit. And it was Houston over Phoenix. And also at halftime here, Seattle is leading the LA Clippers. Well, still to come in sports, the Baltimore Orioles keep bumbling along, and the USL home spring sports season ends in grand style. For the best of the best, come to Arsenal Ford in New Iberia, where we're having a five-day clearance sale on every new car in inventory. Great cars at great prices, like these Festivas at $56.95, Tempos $99.95, Mustangs $89.95, or put some excitement in your life with the Escort GT at $94.95. Or try a Thunderbird Turbo Coupe with a $1,000 rebate. So for the best of the best, drive a little and save a lot. The sale ends Monday night at Arsenal Ford in New Iberia. One more night like this and I'm leaving. I swear. Daddy? Where's my daddy? Oh, God. What's happening to us? If your family is being destroyed by alcohol and drugs, Koala can help. When you call, a Koala professional is ready with answers, understanding, and hope in total confidence. You don't have to go it alone. Koala can help. Woohoo! Look at all these people winning big in the game Monopoly at McDonald's. The Vanoy family of Lafayette, Louisiana took a chance. And good old dad won big money. Right after Robert Benoit's ship came in, his offshore crew went out. But the family is anxiously awaiting his return. You can win, too. So come on, take a chance. Play Monopoly at McDonald's. Sometimes you can't wait for a sale. You want low prices today. You need Walmart. I always need so many things. You want a great selection every day. You need Walmart. Who's got time to shop all over for the best prices? You want one-stop shopping. You need Walmart. It really is all here. <laughs> great prices when I really need them. You need Walmart. All the time. That's the Walmart way. Today was your last day to see any spring sports over at USL. First of all, the 15th-ranked tennis team hosted Tulane, and this one was really no contest. The Green Wave fell behind 6-0 and then gave up. Four seniors said goodbye. Ashley Roney, Jay Bailey, Paul Rieke, and Tony Minnis all have had great careers. And with his victory today, Minnis broke the all-time school record for wins with 93. His departure will be somewhat lessened by his brother, Patrick Minnis, who was redshirted this season and will have four years left. And don't forget a that fellow by the name of Brett Garnett will be back for his senior year. Over at the baseball diamond, USL and Lamar finished up their three-game series. In the second inning of this game, the Cajuns were trailing one to nothing when Ron Vincent came to the plate. Grounded out here second to first, but that was good enough to score Mike Moreno, and it was all tied at one to one. Next inning, though, Lamar's Mark Simon slaps this one deep over the left field wall. That put the Cardinals ahead, but USL came back to win this one today by the score of 14 to 10. The Cajuns are now in great shape to wrap up a fourth place finish in the American South Conference and a spot in the postseason tournament. If they win just one of the next of uh, three against Pan Am next week. Or if Lamar loses just one game in their final series with Louisiana Tech, then it's all over. Well, the Baltimore Orioles are really making a name for themselves this season. Losers of the first 17 games in the year, the Birds are making news outside of the sports world. I mean, how many times has Dan Rather read a baseball score, right? Well, tonight they tried to avoid an 0-18 start as they face Kansas City on the road. And even the Orioles announcers are kind of ashamed of the team. They're acting like Saints fans of years gone past. But here we go. Baltimore pitcher Mark Thurman was rolling along until he got to the fifth inning. That's Kurt Stillwell popping one over the left field wall. Then after George Brett singles, Danny Tartable takes this one to the same place. The final score this afternoon from Orioles Stadium. Kansas City 3, Baltimore 1. And uh, the Orioles will be off tomorrow. They won't lose then. But then Minnesota Tuesday, they have to play three games in the Homer Dome. 
Elsewhere, New York defeats Toronto today. They cooled off Toronto, I should say. Minnesota got going in the Homer Dome as they defeated Cleveland. It was Oakland by a couple of runs over Chicago. Boston shuts out Milwaukee as Roger Clemens keeps moving. It was Texas over Detroit and Seattle over California by 4-2 scores. New York finally uh, loses. What may have been the most ambitious contest in the history of Lafayette Radio ended today at Lafayette's Acadia Adam Mall. Radio station KSMB officially brought their month-long scavenger hunt to a close this afternoon. For days now, listeners have been scouring Acadiana for everything from old shoes and cans of Billy Beer to a business card from TV 10 Zone sports director John Moran. KSMB morning man Bobby Novosad is seen here helping the more than 200 finalists sort out their goodies. When it was all over, the name of Diane Champagne of Lafayette was drawn as the winner of the contest. Diane will receive her grand prize of $5,000 tomorrow morning at KSMB Studios. A lot of people took part in that. I could deal with the money, that's I for sure. I could deal with the money, too. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us tonight. Hope you have a good week. See you next Saturday at 6. Good night.